with Earthworks today to share and discuss their groundbreaking research on the threats that are posed by the oil and gas industry in terms of harm to our children's health right here in Ohio and in localities like those in the southeastern portion of our state, such as Barnesville. As a membership-driven organization, Moms Clean Air Force knows how important it is to bring this data to our membership in impacted states, but also to you as members of the media. Today, we're going to hear from three speakers who will each speak for about two to three minutes. If you have questions as the speakers are presenting, please feel free to ask them in the Zoom chat, identify yourself, and then who it is that you are writing for. After all the speakers have finished, if we have some chat questions, we will put the questions to the speaker in the order that they were received and provide the questioner the opportunity to then follow up. And then finally, we will open the floor to all questions. So to kick things off, I'm going to introduce our speakers. Um, first of all, we have um, Alan Septoff, who is the Strategic Communications Director for Earthworks. Um, he will ground us in the significance of Earthworks research and the central findings as they relate to children in Ohio. Alan is gonna present for about three minutes to do this setup and then we'll also visually demonstrate the online tools available. Then we will follow that with our speakers. Our first speaker will be Dr. Peggy Ann Berry. She is a registered nurse, a certified occupational health nurse specialist and member of the Alliance of Nurses for Healthy Environments. Next, Carolyn Harding will share. She is a grassworks organizer with a commitment to protecting our water, air, soil, and local rights for the sake of life on our planet. She is also the co-founder and organizer of the Columbus Community Bill of Rights, which is a ballot initiative campaign to establish local control over the oil and gas industry's infrastructure and toxic waste dumping in Columbus, Ohio. And our final speaker will be Kathy Becker, who is the chair of the Sierra Club's Ready for 100 campaign right in Columbus, Ohio. Again, after our last speaker, we're going to open up the call for your questions from the floor. While speakers are presenting, please feel free to ask questions in the Zoom chat, identify yourself and who you're writing for. And then after all the speakers have finished, we will have the chat questions um, available to be answered. Um, we plan to wrap up no later than 1230, um, but that will give us a 15 minutes of presentation and then time for questions afterwards. Before we get started, I would like to point out that this event will be recorded. We will include that link in a press release that will be emailed to everyone on this call following the webinar. It will also include other important links, so please be on the lookout for that. Okay, with that, I'm going to turn the floor over to you, Alan. Thank you very much, Laura. Um, so I'm hoping everybody can see my screen uh, and I'll go through a few slides and then jump to the map. So uh, the oil and gas uh, threat map uh, is a uh, geospatial analysis at, uh, at the national, state, and county level that inventories uh, active oil and gas production facilities meaning uh, wells and uh, extraction related facilities and uh, identifies populations threatened by those facilities and plots all of that information on a map, uh, which I will show you in a few minutes. And so uh, what's in the map, there are, uh, we took publicly available state uh, and industry data about uh, showing active oil and gas wells, compressors and processors. So facilities related to extraction of oil and gas. This does not include refineries. It doesn't include waste injection. Um, and this data uh, in Ohio mainly comes from Ohio DNR. So around, so we plotted uh, each one of those facilities on uh, a, a map, and then we drew a half mile health threat radius around each facility. And we created that health, half mile health threat radius uh, using uh, uh, consulting with experts uh, in the field and uh, relying on peer reviewed science, which shows that uh, 
when a person lives or resides within half mile of uh, active oil and gas extraction, that health impacts are clearly, most clearly correlated um, with proximity. And that uh, correlation increases in strength as one gets closer to uh, an active facility. It's important to know that this health threat radius does not mean that if you live within a health half mile that you're doomed or that if you live beyond a half mile uh, you're safe. Um, that pollute, pollutants have been detected uh, dozens of miles away from oil and gas uh, uh, production and um, people do live within half mile that haven't been uh, harmed. But this is wh where the science says health impacts are most clearly correlated. Um, and so then uh, after uh, drawing that uh, half mile on a map, we use Department of Education data and Census Bureau data to identify uh, what's within that half mile? Who's threatened by uh, by uh, air pollution from oil and gas uh, production? And we've identified total population, uh, and we've also identified uh, schools and enrollment of those schools within a half mile. Um, and so, what's the real news here today? Uh, the news here today is that in Ohio. 780,026 uh, children and students attend 2,205 uh, schools and daycares within the half mile health threat radius. And three, that 3.2 million Ohioans total uh, resi reside within that half mile. And that 3.2 million is actually the most of any state in the nation, including uh, Texas. Uh, this is important because the Trump administration's Environmental Protection Agency under Scott Pruitt is proposing right now to eliminate um, safeguards to reduce uh, the type of pollution uh, emitted from these, uh, these facilities, and that's mostly uh, methane and uh, toxics associated with methane like benzene uh, carcinogen. Um, so, in addition to that news, this is actually an update. Uh, the, the school data is new. Uh, the number of facilities, uh, production facilities, is an update from 2016 data to 2017. And also in the map are videos of the type of pollution that we're talking about. It's normally invisible. We have infrared videos showing what they are and uh, video interviews of impacted residents. Um, and in addition, uh, there is data that shows uh, the impacts of ozone smog um, on, uh, on populations and, um, uh, uh, and air toxics at the county level, whether people are in the threat radius or not. So with that, uh, let me bring up the map briefly. So, um, apologies, I'm going to reload this map uh, and let's see, make that big and then reload this map and it'll take just a second uh, for it to load and uh, we will show you the, the searchable uh, map of the state of Ohio. So this is Ohio. Um, at the top of the map, there is uh, the aggregate statistics for the state of Ohio. 3.2 million people total, 780,000 students uh, in schools within the threat radius and other uh, statistics at the state level. Down in the lower left is uh, information about uh, at the county level, and it's broken down more granularly. And so if we click on a county, um, uh, 
it will tell you what county you're looking at, or you could go up in the upper right and search on a location, a street address or a city, and it would jump to the county. And once you've selected a county, you can click on these cards down here and it will show you what you're looking at. So the colors of the cards, the yellow is associated with the threat radius. And you can, um, if you are interested in focusing on other data, you can deselect the threat radius. So in Wetzel County, 2,364 total people um, and demographic breakdowns over here. And if you're interested in focusing on, um, say, for example, just schools, uh, you would uncheck everything but schools. And uh, all you're looking at now are schools in Ohio and elsewhere um, uh, in the country that are within a half mile of an active oil and gas uh, well. And you can click on each one of them to get their name. It will tell you their name, Seacrest Elementary School. And the data set includes public and private, uh, primary and secondary schools, um, daycares and uh, junior colleges and uh, colleges and, and universities. And so um, by uh, clicking on the cards and with the check marks, you can uh, select, have individual facilities show up. You can click on each one of these individual facilities and get ownership information and uh, API unique identifier number by which you can get, find more information online um, and uh, other other information associated with these cards down here um, but the big information here is the schools and daycares that is what's being released today uh, at the, the national state and county levels um, if for some reason you are interested, want to see the, the data underlying this on the media page of uh, the oil and gas threat map, there's a link to the uh, spreadsheets with the aggregate data at uh, state and county level. So you can see county by county uh, what, the, what the numbers are and manipulate it yourself. Um, so with that, um, I will turn it back over to Laura. Thank you so much, Alan. That's, that's a lot of information and we appreciate you walking us through um, how to work the map and how to understand the data. So thank you for that. All right, Dr. Berry, you're up. Thank you, Laura. Over the last five, six years, our country has taken important steps to eliminate volatile organic compounds, also known as VOCs, in the oil and gas production. Health effects from VOCs are usually temporary and improve once the source of exposure is identified and removed. These health effects can include irritation of eyes, nose, throat, and skin. Headache, nausea, and dizziness may occur as well as fatigue and shortness of breath. Unfortunately, what you can see through the threat map, this pollution regu is regularly leaked into our air and comes with a drastic cost of public health. Areas where this pollution is heavy see a greater rate of asthma attacks for kids, increased risks of cancer, and other public health threats. These negative consequences occur because government officials like Scott Pruitt do not put the health of the citizens over the profit of oil and gas companies. In Ohio, 3.3 million people live within the, a half mile of an oil or gas producing facility, a proximity that is associated with increased risk of health problems. There are 29,000 childhood asthma attacks each year that are caused by ozone smoke from oil and gas pollution. Ohio children are at higher risk of exposure to oil and gas. One Ohioan dies of asthma every two to three days. And although asthma is not the leading cause of death, it is 
still the cause of more than 3,300 deaths per year nationally and 155 asthma deaths per year in Ohio. That's too many. The public health dangers presented by methane and other pollutants from oil and gas production are evident here in Ohio, and it's time to reduce these pollutants for the health of our children. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Carolyn? Hi, I'm Carolyn. I am a grassroots organizer in Columbus area. And five years ago, I became very concerned about fracking in Ohio and its impacts on water, air, and soil and on our public health, our, our kids. And so um, I did an online petition just because it was becoming popular. We, the people of Ohio, banned fracking and injection wells. And I got two over 2,000 signatures. So I said, okay, I'm gonna honor these people's signatures. I'm gonna go give this, hand deliver this to every single one of our state lawmakers, um, Republicans, Democrats, um, reps and senators and governor. And I did, I handed it and I talked to each one of them. And what I came back with was, didn't matter what party you were at, if, you're, if your district had shale, natural gas in it, you are going to be supporting fracking. And most everybody thought it was a, you know, a job. We were gonna get more jobs because of this. So Governor Kasich gave the green light and the red carpet to the industry. And um, he transferred um, Craig Butler to Ohio EPA. And Craig used to work for ODNR and he made the permits much easier and faster. So the industry has just really just come in very fast. And ODNR is making a lot of money um, from um, permits to inject the frac waste into Ohio from Pennsylvania, West Virginia, as well as our own frac waste. So what do we do when this industry is coming in and, and it's polluting our water, our air for our kids and our future? Um, well, we reach out, we do what Earthworks is doing, we, are doing, we do what, what Laura Burns and Moms Clean Air Energy, Clean Air Air Force is doing, what, what Sierra Club is doing, and we, we get involved. That's what my biggest um, ask for the people that are listening, is that you stop just reading, stop being worried, and start getting involved. Um, what I did is I started working with um, community rights, because we're working within the legal system of our, our rights to have initiate change or init ballot initiatives in our city to create law that would protect our water, air, and soil, um, to create laws that would give the people the rights rather than just the corporations. Because right now, ODNR has complete jurisdiction over fracking permits and um, um, waste permits. And, and they're not making decisions that are good for the local people. They're making decisions that are good for the profits of the large corporations, maybe, and for the politicians that are getting corporate campaign um, donations. So the Bill of Rights that we are working on in Columbus would make it illegal to pollute your water, air, and soil, and it's specifically geared towards the oil and gas industry. People in Columbus say, well, why are we worried? There's no fracking wells in Columbus. And that's true. But north of us, in our watershed, there are 13 active frac waste injection wells taking this radioactive toxic waste from the um, fracking drilling. And in this waste are endocrine disruptors, which can powerfully um, compromise people's reproductive abilities. Um, and um, there are carcinogens, there are endocrine, I'm sorry, there are neurotoxins. And then on top of that is the natural radionuclides that come from the shale itself that comes back up when the, when the shale has been fractured and the water waste comes back up. This radionuclide is radium-226, and that's what can get into our water supply and into the dust and the air that people breathe. And this is a bone-seeking um, radionuclide that, that creates um, problems with bone cancer and possible strong links with leukemia. So as a Columbus activist, 
we've been primarily concerned about the water, but all my activist friends working on the east part of Ohio are dealing with the compressor stations and all the air pollution with that and all the frack wells and air and water and soil pollution. So um, I am in complete alliance with the Moms Clean Air Force because my son has asthma as well. And um, all of these wonderful, effective groups um, are doing a good job. And I would love people to look into the community rights movement, um, Ohio Community Rights Network. Is that enough? Thanks, Carolyn. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you so much. No problem. Kathy? Okay, um, hopefully you all can hear me. Um, my name is Kathy Callen Becker, and as Laura said, I'm the Columbus, Ohio leader for the Sierra Club's Ready for 100 campaign. Um, so the threat map that you all saw, you all saw shows uh, 3.2 million people in Ohio, including over 780,000 children directly experiencing the negative effects of living near oil and gas operations. Ohio has the most people at risk of any state in the country due to air and water pollution from oil and gas operations, and also the most children at risk. So just looking at the threat map, you could see that the entire central and eastern portions of Ohio are at risk, and that's terrible for our children's and our family's health. But it doesn't have to be this way. Instead of subsidizing the oil and gas industry, we could be investing in pollution-free renewable energy from solar, wind, geothermal, and other forms of renewable energy that can power our lives without harming our health. Ready for 100 sees itself as the solution to the climate and health impacts of oil and gas. We are urging cities and towns to commit to transitioning to 100% renewable energy by 2050 or before. 100% renewable energy, a lot of people think, well, that's great, but it's not really within our reach. But actually, it really is within our reach. It's hard to overemphasize how much prices have fallen for renewable energy. Um, since 1976, the price of solar energy has fallen a staggering 99%. Since 1980, the price of wind energy has fallen 95%. And just in the last 10 years, the price of battery storage has fallen 80%. And I can get anyone exact figures if they want them for this. So imagine if every dot you saw on the threat map was not an oil and gas well, but a house or a school that had solar panels on the roof we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Our homes and families would be using clean energy that has no adverse health effects and cannot be outsourced. So a lot of cities are already transitioning to 100% renewable energy. 40 cities have made the commitment, including several in the Midwest, such as Grand Rapids, Michigan, Rochester, Minnesota, Madison, Wisconsin, and most recently, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which made the announcement the day after President Trump pulled out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Um, the timelines for these cities vary. A lot of them are pledging to transition to 100% renewable by 2035. Six cities are already there at 100% renewable. Um, one of those is Georgetown, Texas, which is the reddest city in the reddest state of Texas. So if they can do it, anyone can. Um, 90 mayors, including the mayor of Cincinnati, have said they want their cities to make this commitment. Um, and Cincinnati is building the largest municipal solar installation in the country to power the city's waterworks. So um, we at the Sierra Club Ready for 100 campaign um, fully support Moms Clean Air Force and Earthworks. Um, this threat map shows exactly why we are take, undertaking the campaign that we are committing. And we are hoping that every city in Ohio will make the pledge to transition to 100% renewable energy so we can power our lives with clean energy and no longer have to rely on oil and gas that hurts our families and our children's health. And that's it. Thank you so much. I really would like to thank each of our participants today for their time, their insight, and their expertise today. I feel we've gained a deeper understanding of the urgent issues that oil and gas pollution brings to Ohio residents. Before we pivot to our moderated question and answer session that's coming up next, I would like to add just very quickly um, to what was already said 
with some concluding thoughts. Methane pollution safeguards would help to clean up the air for the most impacted children living, learning, and playing within one half mile of oil and gas operations, as well as improving regional and state air quality. However, the federal government is working to dismantle vital methane pollution safeguards that would reduce harmful air pollution from oil and gas operations, leaving our children without protections. Children's lungs and brains are still developing until their early adulthood, so any pollution onslaught can have a deleterious effect, especially because children have a longer time to live with these toxic exposures that can cause diseases. Ultimately, our children serve as sentinels for adverse health outcomes in the general population, the proverbial canary in the coal mine. It is the responsibility of all adults in our communities or our state and federal leaders to protect the children who don't yet have a voice to speak about pollution in the air they breathe. Ohio must act to protect children's little lungs by issuing safeguards that reduce the oil and gas industry's harmful air pollution. Thank you for your attending um, today's webinar. Do we have any questions that you would like to ask of our speakers? Hi guys, this is Molly from Earthworks. I don't see any questions in the chat box, so if we have any questions from folks on the phone. Yes, feel free to pipe in. Okay, well, is there a question? I don't think there are. All right, um, then I will conclude today's webinar. Um, thank you again to all of our speakers and to Alan for sharing your insights and expertise. Thank you to any media that participated. And I would like to remind everyone that they will be able to access a um, recorded version of this webinar within about an hour. We will be emailing everyone on this call a press release with the link and a few others that will be helpful for your reporting. Um, if you have any questions, you can feel free to contact um, myself or Alan. Uh, my email is lburns at momscleanairforce.org. And Alan, if you would share your email, I would appreciate it. Uh, my email is a septoff at earthworksaction.org and you should be getting that in the press release shortly okay thank you guys for all of your time and your participation everyone have a great day thank you laura thank you alan thank you both take care